has been doing well. It's been a long time. I got a video today and you know, right now, everybody in Dallas, we're in a stay at home order. And I know it's kind of hard to go out in stores and find things. So today I wanted to give you just a quick rundown of what we're gonna be doing today. We found some cheap cut of steaks, but they're choice. I went to my local Kroger's and I got them right here. These are some T-bone steaks, guys. And you know, they're not your best cut. Um, see, as you can see, the butcher may have cut a little too much off on one side, but in this time that we're dealing with, meat's hard to find a little bit. So, what we're gonna do, first thing is, you wanna make sure your steaks are dry, okay? I've already done that, took a paper towel, just take the moisture out, and the reason you wanna do that is you wanna make sure you get a lot of searing crispiness to your steaks, okay? So I got a little seasoning, and I'm gonna take one glove off because I wanna use it, I've touched those steaks. You wanna keep, make sure you stay sanitized at all times. So I got my other hand, I'm gonna use that to grip the steaks. Just put a little seasoner on it, okay, after I've dried them. Got a little salt, pepper, garlic right here that I mixed up that I keep as an all-purpose season, really, for in the house, you know. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit this first with a salt, pepper, garlic. You know, basic season is to start. Hit it on the other one. Hit on this one. And I like to get the edges. Turn it over, get your other side. Get your edges, cause you know, I don't know if y'all like me, I like to taste the seasoning in the bone, you know, all kind of things like that, you know. So seasoning is always good. Take my other one, hit on the edges, hit the sides right there, especially that fat. These, the marble in these are okay. You know, Kroger's used to have some pretty nice steaks. I'll show you how thick these are a little bit. That's my finger. I know I did a video a long time ago, about five, six years ago or more. A lot of people didn't like how thin the steaks were. Where, you know, they kissed my butt. That's what I, all I had, but this is what I got now. Okay? And as you notice, a lot of people put olive oil on it. I don't like to put olive oil on it, you know, just to start. So now I'm going to hit it with a little extra kick up. So I got some barbecue rub I've made. It's kind of like a little kick to it. It's got some dill seed. It's got a little bit of red pepper, uh, salt, pepper, garlic, things like that in there. So let's go to hit that up. A little paprika, onion powder. Just We don't want to do a whole bunch of this because I'm cooking for everybody. And these are going to be sliced up in the end. Just give it a little dash on the top. Give it a little kick. Turn them over. Hit it right there. Don't forget those edges. Hit that one right there. Hit the other side. A good seasoning in there. Okay, guys. So that looks good to me. Nothing wrong with a little extra. Okay, that looks good to me. No, I just said that. And so now, I'm gonna take you over here to the grill. So I got my um, Weber Summit out here, the good old trusty charcoal. As you can see, I got it sky high heat. You want your um, grill hot for doing these steaks, you know, they're not that thick. So I'm gonna do a reverse here today, guys. So right now I got about 550 degrees. I think that's good enough because I usually clean my grill like that. And see the way those charcoals look like that? You want them nice and gray. That's what you want. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put these steaks on. I want to see, you know, how good of a, I don't really care about the grill marks, but let's just see. I'm going to put them on an angle, put one right there, press it down to your grill, that way it sit up in the grain. The other one, I kind of put it the opposite way. This is hot, guys. Press that down. And then I'll take this last one over here. Place that one right there. Keep that right there. You want to kind of watch these. You know, I'll turn them every now and then. While these are sitting, I'm gonna go, I got a black pan. We're gonna make a mushroom sauce and I want this pan to heat up, just get warm. I'm not gonna put nothing in it right now. I'll put that on that side and I'll let that get warm while it's going. So by the time I put my butter and my oil in it, um, we got a little red wine to put in that, and we're gonna drizzle these steaks with a little mushroom sauce today. So we'll let those go maybe 
I say three minutes, three to five minutes per side, depending on thickness. For one, three to five minutes per inch of thickness, I would say, per side. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna spin this around and then put those on the non-charcoal side, the cool side, once I get the marks I like in the, the char. All right, guys, so let's just let these cook a little bit and I'll wash my pan out and everything and um, we'll come back and check on them. Guys, these steaks are already smelling good. This has been about three, four minutes. Let's turn them over, take a look. Look at the flame hitting them. I like that flame, kissing them like that. Not no fancy grill marks, as you can see. That's 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 perfect for me. And these are, these are not gonna take that long to cook. Just like that. Look how those cooking. And you know, once you got, I found that once you got um, cooked on one side and it's got a little of the residue on the grill, you probably won't get as good grill marks on the other side. So these are cooking pretty well. Let's just show you with my temperature gauge. Um, maybe how fast they're coming up so I can move them. About 105 right there. So that's good right there. 115. I'm trying to not get burnt. Ooh, one, ooh. I don't know if I can take that one, guys. That was pretty hot. So what I'm gonna do while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spin this to the other side and all I'm gonna do is so I can get it just move it over and now those are cooked off the heat time to turn them around for the bone hit that side that way I can monitor the temperature a little better okay and while that's heating up now I got my pan on this side. Don't have to worry about even touching that. Let that heat up. I'm gonna close this lid because I suspect these gonna come off a little earlier. And then I'll come back and take these steaks off, put them in a foil on a pan, cover some foil and let them rest while I do the mushrooms. All right guys, it doesn't take that long. Let's go ahead and give these a try, give these a look. See how they're coming up. Check this one first. 133, that's where I want that. 128, 130. It's gonna try to get there. It's a little not done. 123, let that one sit a little longer. 124, 120. Let's see, let's look at this one again. All right, so I want I want to take that one off because that's gonna be a little more medium. And I don't want to overcook that. So I'm gonna let that one go ahead and rest. Put that right there. Take a little bit of this butter, set it on there, and I'll put some foil over that. All right, kind of clean this off a little bit. This little wooden uh, grill cleaner. I'll let those sit a little bit, a little bit more while that pan heats up more. Bring these over. Okay, so let's give this a little close and we'll come back and check it. So you know what? Before I go, I want to put a little more. I want. Let me put the butter on these. Just let it sit while it's cooking, and then we'll close the lid on us and, get, and check it about maybe two minutes. All right, guys. So I think these are ready. Let's go ahead and take a look. And you know, you gotta remember the steak's gonna continue to come up once you, even if you're resting it. I want to take the temperature. 132, 129, 130. That's where I want them. It's kind of like a medium rare. 131, there we go. All right, let's take these off. Butter's drizzling, let them rest. I like that char right there. Put this one over here. Cover it up with foil. Takes about 10, 15 minutes to rest. And now, pan is good and hot, guys sitting over those hot coals. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and make us a sauce. Put a little olive oil in your, pan, in your cast iron pan. I love these cast iron pans because they get real hot. That's about two tablespoons right there. Let that come up a uh, bit and 
thing about cast iron is you got to preheat your, your skillet in order to cook it well so it won't stick. Okay, so this is not going to take long. That pan is pretty much hot. You can see it. That oil is moving pretty good. And what I'm going to do, you know, mushrooms, they typically like to soak up a lot of juices. So I'm going to throw these. I got some scallions, mint scallions, and I'm going to dump that in there. Right there. Hit it with the whisk a little bit. You might need a little bit more oil as you go. Right there. And I'm going to move this over here because my hand is right over that heat. <laughs> it is burning. So let's keep that over there. That way I can kind of monitor as that goes. Now you see how they're already browning up? That pan is hot. All right. So what I'm going to do now, put a little more olive oil in there. The mushroom is like a sponge. And those that's hot. And I'm going to grab these mushrooms, guys. All right. All right, so now, got the mushrooms in right there. We're gonna cook these. Uh-oh, got a casualty. Kind of stir these up. So what you're gonna do, you're just gonna get these to keep stirring them till they break down. I'm wasting a lot of these, guys. No edits. <laughs> you might need a little more, more oil to get them to cook how you want to. It don't matter if one or two fall out. All right. You give these a good brown in a little bit. That's starting to look good. They're starting to break down. Put a little seasoning on this a little bit. All I'm gonna do, guys, is use a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic to start. A little seasoning. There we go. Starting to look good. We're gonna add this sauce in here in a minute. I just wanna break these down a little bit. I got a cow spear of war. Can't be wasting none of it in these times. Right there. Can't be wasting anything. Mush you know, guys, you, you won't believe like a lot of stuff like mushrooms, the craziest things are hard to find right now. Like my wife, she she makes she started making bread. We got an idea about making some rolls. And one thing we could not find in the store is some dang yeast. I don't understand it. Is everybody a bread maker right now? <laughs> I don't understand it. Like, yeast. I mean, of course, you can't find, like, lunch meat. You can't even find no Earl Campbell's sausages. Grits. 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 Everybody is at home. If you don't know how to cook, you're going to learn now. You know, I think we're on a uh, stay-at-home order until um, April 30th. But, you know. I'm still going to work and my wife works from home. And I hope everybody else is out there staying safe and taking care of their family. Look at that. Looking good. Look at that. Looking good. So let's go ahead. I broke those down. You can see that those was coming out the pan when I started. Just want to get a little color on those guys. Get some of those that onion mix up in there or scallion. All the same to me. Go ahead and pour me some of that. Let's go and pour our red wine mixture. Let me tell you what's in this, guys. Um, this red wine mixture, and I'll put the ingredients on the video, but it's basically um, some red wine, um, Dijon mustard. Baby, help me out. What else is it? Uh, what's the sauce? sauce? And then some water. The water down, though. Yeah, the water, the water down to take, you know, the strength out of the Worcestershire sauce. We already, you can already, we already pre-mixed this guy. So I'm gonna um, sit here and I'm gonna pour it and show you. 
there that is right there let that heat up and guys you just want to cook this a, a good five or six minutes mm -hmm. and you want this to kind of reduce halfway and while that's sitting right there let's go ahead and throw a couple more ingredients in it i'm gonna go over here and grab the um i got this some rosemary and thyme and i want to grab you know don't overdo it you can grab some fresh thyme if you want i got all i got is some ground thyme so that's what i'm going to put in it that's all they had at the store. that is all they had <laughs> and i got the rosemary leaves guys the kroger brand we'll just throw a little bit of rosemary leaves up in there that's all they had at the store yep working with what you got i would call this uh quarantine steaks that's what i would say Look at that, and this it is boiling. I, I guess I can push it out a little more and get it over more over that heat. Okay, so we're gonna let that cook. I'm gonna close the top. I'm gonna let that reduce. Check it every now and then, and we're kind of fast forward. And I'll sh show you. I'll add the butter after this. Um, can't add one thing. Season us. We got some more season, guys. We got that salt and pepper. A little more salt, pepper, garlic. Don't overdo it. That's good enough teaspoon and a half I had to measure but I really don't measure guys with a lot of a lot of things I do especially when I cook all the time at home kind of by sight kind of knowing over time what it's doing all right so we'll let that break down I'll close this and we'll check in about three or four minutes Man, oh man, I think that is reduced down good, guys. So I'm gonna finish it off, put a little butter in it. Nothing wrong with a little butter. Go ahead and mix that around. You can see it's reduced down because now I've got a lot more mushrooms. It's got a little bit thick too. Man, these smell good and they look good. Need to do more of these videos, guys. I gotta, we got a lot of ideas. Um, just haven't done it in a while, so we're gonna have to start getting back on it. Get back into YouTube land. I always say that. Let me, I'm, I'm dead serious, guys. You got, gotta start putting these videos out, even if they're simple. Look at that. Butter's kind of all mixed up right there. Still reducing as I should a little bit. And we're gonna take these off and I'll meet you guys in the house on the cutting board and we'll get this stuff plated. Show you what we eat tonight. All right, guys, these steaks have been resting about 15 minutes. These things look real good, guys. Straight line real marks. I got some potatoes right here. Cut them paper thin with a mandolin. Put them in the oven, guys, for about, what, we say about 20 minutes. Season it on it, salt, pepper, garlic, a little paprika, then you got your mushroom mix right there. Wife said it tastes like red wine. You can taste it, but it's got good seasoning in it. I got my beer over here, guys. Got my Shiner Mango um, seasonal beer. It's Texas Brew with my little Yeti. But no, I'm not sponsored by Yeti. So let's get these cut up. Uh, we're gonna cut these up in the strips. So what I wanna do, kinda go around this bone, cut this all off of here. Why are you cutting into strips? Because we're going to put the sauce over it. And guys, like I said, it's quarantine time. So these come in a three pack. And I'm trying to feed everybody in the house. So we can't be gr be greedy today. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to save these bones because I want to eat on them. So some people don't eat a lot of meat. And we'll cut these. And what you want to do, you want to find the grain. You want to kind of cut against the grain. It's kind of hard to see on this right here. So I'll make a couple of cuts. See if I get it. Yep, and I think I got it right there. So let's cut some small strips. And you'll know you cut it against the grain because it'll look like that. Kind of like you no know, straight lines, kind of broken up in the middle. Hope y'all can see that. If not, then look at that color off there. Good medium on those, on this one. Let's cut that right there. I'm, I'm kind of curious what to see how these some of these other ones turned out because they all cut a little different 
Cut that right off the bone. This one don't have a lot of bone on it. If I can find it. It's all in there. So that, that. I have the bone. <laughs> she wants the bone. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm getting the bone too. So we getting one in there. I don't care about these grown other kids we got in the house. No, we have, we have grown children. Grown, grown kids. Grown kids. I mean, grown adults. We mm -hmm. should not be having cooking stuff for children. Adults. And this is a good medium too, guys. I love my meat like that. Mm-hmm. Ribeyes, more of a medium rare. Ribeyes tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go and get these plated up. Let's plate it. Right there. That's enough on that one. Is it? Yeah, for right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're gonna put some of this mushroom sauce right on the top of it. Sauce. The rolls are in the oven. And, and it'll, be a fin it'll be finished off with a roll. Let's grab a fork. I want to see what it tastes like. Grab a couple of these mushrooms. Piece of the steak. Right there. Let's see what we got. Mmm. That's good. Those flavors right there and that mushroom sauce. Seasoning on the meat is real good. I like that. So feel free, leave a comment. I hope y'all like the video. I hope y'all are looking forward to another video and look forward to more of them we're gonna be doing. And stay tuned for more in the future. Toothpicks.